think makes these two programs a great fit for the city of Toledo? Why have all cities with Toledo benefit from the new VO program and Vision Zero? I think, you know, Toledo, we can see why Toledo would benefit from a Vision Zero program. Um, you know, Toledo is, uh, the historical urban planning of Toledo is such that we've, again, prioritized uh, smooth, quick, uncongested vehicular traffic. Um, if you look back, the uh, history of planning in Toledo is very interesting. Um, you know, like a lot of other cities, uh, especially in this area of the country in the you know, Midwest, we've, um, you know, there's a long established practice of widening roads, of building these kinds of interstates, these kinds of larger, uh, high volume, high speed networks. Um, and so, you know, I think that we can see why Toledo would naturally lend itself to a, I call it an, an, uh, an updating of our city's urban transportation program um, and networks. We have within the city what is considered to be a perfect transportation network uh, right after the, you know, the construction of highways and interstates by the federal government in the 50s and 60s. We have a city that really honestly, although, you know, that sometimes it takes you a little bit longer to get down Secor, you know, if it's 5 p.m. On a, on a Thursday, there really is no genuine congestion. No one gets stuck in traffic in Toledo, Ohio. Um, and that's good. However, I think that it would be more beneficial to the citizens of Toledo to um, reorient them. Instead of focusing so single-mindedly on what we in engineering, uh, traffic engineering called level of service, instead of level of service is this idea of how smoothly can traffic move through? What's your throughput? Uh, throughput is the number of vehicles that can get through any given area in any given time. Instead of focusing so single-mindedly on throughput, focusing instead on some of these other metrics like, um, you know, does it have some of this other multimodal infrastructure? How are the sidewalks? Are, you know, are bikes and vehicles sufficiently separated so that they're both traveling safely and they're not in conflict with each other? Um, you know, and so I think that that's, uh, that's why Toledo would benefit so much from it. With VO uh, and the dockless piece, I think that Toledo has the bones, right, of a great, great multimodal city. And I think that VO is something that not only the practical uh, benefits that I talked about a little bit ago, but also a big part of this pilot, the, the pilot that we're doing with VO, is that I'm going to get so much phenomenal data from this program. Uh, VO and I, and because of my history uh, working with these programs, I know what data they can generate and I know how to use that data uh, for further planning purposes. And so I think that this is going to be a really exciting opportunity to get a, a snapshot, a, a feel for where are people going? Where are the primary destinations? What are the attractions, not just downtown, but throughout the city? You know, wh where do University of Toledo students, where are they going to take scooters? They're going to get on one after class. And then where are they going to go? I don't know where they all live. You know, those certain neighborhoods, maybe we need to shore up some of the pedestrian uh, infrastructure on the routes from the high density uh, University of Toledo off campus housing areas towards the University of Toledo in order to make this a, a safer city, to make those safer networks. Um, and I think that VO is, is, is a great first step uh, into beginning to analyze these things and beginning to take the temperature of the city. With the, the Solheim, Solheim Cup coming, coming up, up, can we expect any more big traffic, traffic announcements? announcements? I'm hoping. We don't have any more big surprises, right? Uh, the Summit Street construction should be completed uh, by the time Solheim begins. Um, and this is a perfect event to show off the Summit Street reconstruction. 
Um, Summit Street was specifically designed in order to be this kind of larger festival street, uh, you know, uh, an introduction to the downtown. Um, I think, again, you know, me, uh, everyone working here at the uh, Division of Transportation, um, the Division of Public Service at large, the mayor's office, everyone is on board. As a matter of fact, I've got uh, two meetings today about Solheim Cup, and those are weekly meetings. Uh, we're working extraordinarily hard on making sure that this event is not only a success, but a safe event, uh, but a fun one, one that is not necessarily as disruptive. I can't promise that it won't be disruptive at all to the people of Toledo, but as uh, you know, as little uh, disruption as possible to their day to days. Um, you know, I, I I spoke in an interview yesterday. He asked me. Are there concerns about congestion around Solheim Cup? Well, I think, yeah. I, I, we've got 150 to 170,000 people coming into the downtown of Toledo, Ohio. Um, Toledo, Ohio, which has a population of 255 or 260,000 now. So we're near doubling our population. Uh, for a weekend. So yeah, there will be some natural congestion. Um, and I, uh, you know, I encourage everyone to, to have a little bit of patience to maybe leave a little bit earlier. Um, one of the things I said yesterday was, um, I encourage everyone who's traveling, especially if they're traveling downtown, especially if they're traveling to the festivities to use alternative forms of transportation, um, ride share, public transportation, uh, even bikes, even our new scooters. All of these are great tools to use if you live, you know, maybe just outside of the uh, downtown footprint. Um, we've set up multiple park and rides uh, with Tarta doing special routes uh, for the extent of Solheim. Um, all of those are going to be great options to avoid or at least mitigate some of those, those traffic challenges. Sean Burnett, Commissioner of Transportation for the City of Toledo, thank you so much for your time. Thank you, Jane.